Hello, my friend, and welcome to Wisdom Trek. This is Guthrie Chamberlain, and I am your guide to wisdom and creating a living legacy. Thank you for joining us for our seven-day week, seven minutes of wisdom podcast. This is day 314 of our trek, and yesterday we finished up a two-day trek where we covered the 10 obvious truths that we soon forget about on our trek of life. For the next few days, we are going to be remaining in camp around the campfire as we continue digging for the nuggets of wisdom that are found in the book of Proverbs. We will continue where we left off previously with chapter 10. This next section of Proverbs compares and contrasts bite-sized nuggets of wisdom that apply to everyday life. I know that you'll enjoy it. Thank you so much for coming along with me each day as we explore and consume these nuggets of wisdom. These bits of wisdom help us to live the rich and satisfying life while we are creating our living legacy. While some days treks are a multi-part series, you can join us at any time and start along with us from that point on. If you would like to listen to any of the past episodes, though, please go to wisdom-trek.com to listen to them and to read the Daily Journal, which includes pictures. You can also subscribe to Wisdom Trek at iTunes, Spreaker, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play, so that each day's trek will be downloaded to you automatically. We're broadcasting our podcast from the studios at Home 2 in Charlotte, North Carolina. With a little break from our intense workload of the past few months, I am back to planning and working on projects that have been set aside. Hopefully, we'll be able to make some good progress over the next few days. But for now, sit back, relax, and enjoy the fresh spring air as we sit around the campfire today and consider the wisdom nuggets found in Proverbs chapter 10. Regardless of whether you consider yourself a person of faith, join us each day as we consume these tidbits of practical common sense. We will all gain wisdom, insight, and understanding with each new bite. Today's section is titled, A Wise Child, and will cover Proverbs chapter 10, verses 1 through 3. This is the second major section of the book of Proverbs, which begins with Proverbs chapter 10, verse 1, and continues through Proverbs chapter 22, verse 16. This section contains 375 short compare and contrast statements that are actually poems in the original Hebrew text. Most poems have two lines, and each poem is one verse long. Each poem is called a proverb. Keep in mind as we work our way through these proverbs that they are not specific commands from God, but general precepts that, if followed, will prove true in your life. The structure of this section is somewhat unusual. Solomon did not separate the Proverbs into groups. The Proverbs change from one subject to another. However, their order does matter. Solomon uses an organic or natural order in his writing. This order is similar to a conversation. For example, one proverb might explain the previous one. Another proverb might contrast the previous one. Together, these proverbs are like conversations. Imagine as we sit around the camp for today that we are a group of wise people talking about wisdom. Each person in the group speaks briefly. We all listen to each other. Then each person tells their thoughts or ideas to the other person. A conversation like this would be similar to this section in the book of Proverbs. As we do go through this book of Proverbs and you have some thoughts on them, please leave a comment on each day's journal pages so that we can all grow in wisdom. We should desire wisdom more than we desire wealth. These Proverbs do discuss many different subjects. However, all these subjects start with the first proverb that we'll look at today. This proverb is about the difference between a wise child and a foolish child. The difference is, of course, wisdom. So let's start with verse 1. The Proverbs of Solomon. A wise child brings joy to his father. A foolish child brings grief to his mother. And just in case we are unsure, the chapter reminds us that these Proverbs were indeed written by King Solomon, the wisest person to ever live. From verse 1, we discover several words in this verse that contrast to other words. Wise contrasts with foolish. Father contrasts with mother. Joy contrasts with grief. Without generalizing too much, when I read this verse, it makes me think about the difference between a father and a mother. When a child does well, and in this case makes wise decision, a father takes great pride in this, maybe even taking some credit for their wisdom. In contrast, when a child is unwise, the mother takes it much more personally as if there was something that she did or did not do that allowed this child to make foolish decisions. Going to the extreme in either case for the parent is not wise. This is especially true as the child grows older into their adulthood. They are then responsible for their own actions. Although we as parents and grandparents do continually greatly influence our children and grandchildren, ultimately the decisions that they make, either wise or foolish, are their responsibilities. Just remember to live your legacy each day. Let's move on to verse 2. Tainted wealth has no lasting value, but right living can save your life. If you obtain money illegally or unethically, it really has no lasting value. You could argue that this is not true. If you obtain money illegally, you can still spend it. You can buy many things. 
We have all read about people who have become wealthy either through illegal or unethical practices. But Solomon argues that this type of wealth is worth nothing. We have already learned that the wealth of wisdom is far greater than any monetary wealth. Money is never more than a tool, and it can be used for either good or bad, but it is nothing more than a tool. Wisdom is better than money, because wisdom will allow you to make the choices that will preserve your life long term. So if a poor man is wise, he is much richer than the wealthiest person who has obtained their wealth through illegal or unethical means. Next to verse 3. The Lord will not let the godly go hungry, but he refuses to satisfy the craving of the wicked. As we apply God's general guidelines to our lives, and as we follow his precepts, we will be taken care of of all the essentials of our life. There is an analogy that can also be gleaned from this verse. If we do what is right in life and business, we will be satisfied with what we have, regardless of whether it is little or much. If we do what is wicked, no matter how much we have in possessions, we will not find the satisfaction in them and we will be continually seeking more. This insatiable desire for more things is certainly evident in many Western cultures today. What great wisdom nuggets that we've uncovered today. Although it may take several days to go through each of these chapters, if our lives are changed by what we uncovered, then it will be well worth the digging. We will continue with a few more nuggets of wisdom from chapter 10 tomorrow. So encourage your family and friends to join us and then come along with us tomorrow for another day of Wisdom Trek, Creating a Legacy. That will finish our podcast for today. Just as you enjoy these daily doses of wisdom, we ask you to help us to grow Wisdom Trek by sharing it with your family and friends, either through email, Facebook, Twitter, or in person as you meet with them and invite them to come along with us each day. The journal for today's trek can be found at wisdom-trek.com. Thank you so much for allowing me to be your guide, your mentor, but most importantly, you are my friend, as I serve you through the Wisdom Trek podcast and journal each day. As we take this trek together, let us always live abundantly, love unconditionally, listen intentionally, learn continuously, lend to others generously, lead with integrity, and leave a living legacy each day. This is Guthrie Chamberlain reminding you to keep moving forward, enjoy your journey, and then create a great day every day. See you tomorrow.